Hey, what is up guys? Brandon here with Cloud Vision Productions. Today I'm going to be going over a quick, semi-thorough tutorial on how I did the transformer effect. Um, kind of a step-by-step -step process of uh, how I was able to achieve this effect. So let's go ahead and get started without further ado. So how I started off with this is I animated a biped. So I'm going to go ahead and select my biped okay, and choose hide unselected okay so this is basically the the start of it um, I get an idea of how I want the transformer to um, basically animate so here we have my biped and usually when I use a biped uh, this is normally what I always use for rigged models, um, anything that I animate inside 3ds Max. So I'm going to hit play. So here's the rough, the rough movements of the animation right here. So, here we go. Springs into action. This is all hand keyed animations. I tried using some motion capture animations, but it just wasn't, it just wasn't flowing very well for me. So after I have my biped um, all good to go, what I do is I try to find a free model online, and I found this Z28 Camaro. Um, I retexturized it. Uh, it came with a blue color, but I used V-Ray materials, and I reassigned materials onto the vehicle, and I made it a little bit more uh, like off the first Transformers movie. And I do know that the Bumblebee movie is coming out, and this was semi-planned because of that. Uh, I do, I do do other projects, but I just, right now I'm working on a Star Wars animation project, but I need to take a break from it, so I have to do something else that's, uh, live visual effects, because that's another thing I love doing, is live visual effects. With animations, anything with animations or visual effects, I love doing it. So what I did was, uh, after I got my vehicle, uh, sorted out, I stripped the inside of it, and usually, because most models come in with, uh, you know, they have the interior design and everything, and um, I went ahead and stripped the inside of part of that. And then after that, this is where the long process comes in. Um, instead of it being a full shell vehicle, what I did is I chose by polygon inside the modify tab, and I edit the mesh, and I selected each uh, part that I want it to move. So as you can see here, this is, uh, everything's basically broken down. Um, it's broken down into pieces and uh, the animation begun so uh, what I did was for the exo exoskeleton part of it I found a bumblebee model online and I went ahead and character rigged that so once I got that rig part done watch let me go ahead and show you this so I'm gonna do H hide selection unselected I'm gonna unhide by name and I'm gonna choose all the objects of the Bumblebee model. So here's a half selection of it. Um, this is just the uh, actual rigged pieces um, onto the actual skeleton. So the car parts are actually not skinned. They're not modified as a character rig. They're actually uh, parented to each of the uh, corresponding bones that I wanted it to go to. So if you go to unhide all, I started beginning uh, animating my pieces piece by piece. As you can see here, I have this. I'm gonna do it by slow. So all this part, this whole, this whole sequence is all hand animated. Um, and then as you can see, the bigger pieces I went ahead and made sure that they uh, were not renderable after a certain frame. So I keyframed that. So if you go frame by frame, you can see it disappears. And I mean, if you watch the movies, I mean, you can actually kind of tell that they do the same thing. Um, it's just more of the important pieces that they usually attach onto the character. Um, in the past, I have used every single one of the parts of the vehicle that I 
that I edited, and it just they just look really bulky, and it doesn't look it looks very clunky and junky looking. Um, so, anyways, so I went ahead and model. Uh, excuse me, I animated piece by piece of the model, and that's what we have. The tires, I scaled them down um, when I was animating. Uh, by hand, I keyframed the scale of them. As you can see, they get a little smaller, and uh, that's just so it, it can be comparable to the uh, actual skeleton of Bumblebee. Play it one more time. Cool stuff, cool stuff. So after I did that, after I got this animation portion done, I went out to uh, I went out to the park, and I took several uh, different uh, sequences and recorded uh, a shot for the visual effects. Um, I did make sure I timed how long my visual effects shot was, and it was between 15 seconds. So uh, I had 15 seconds to work with, and then I also did the camera movements of it. Uh, I mimicked the camera movements of how I wanted it to be done. So this is just an animated camera right here. But this is basically in my head how I wanted the sequence to go. And uh, I got it something pretty similar to it um, from the live visual effects shot. So I went to the park, did that, and then I went ahead and went into side Buju and I motion tracked my shot. And once it was motion tracked, I dumped it into uh, 3ds Max. And I got all the angles perfectly, and uh, from there I just rendered it out, and I did the final touches in Adobe After Effects. Um, let's go ahead and open up the actual scene file of um, the live visual effects shot. Open that up. All right, so here's the actual live uh, visual effects uh, that I did. Uh, here's the actual shot. Go ahead and hide this plane. That's my shadow plane. All right, as you can see, this is uh, uh, imported data from Buju, and this is tracking the points of the actual scene. So if I go back to camera, choose my V-Ray camera, you can see the points that it plotted out for me to turn a 2D image into 3D so I can put it in here and translate it uh, with my visual effects shot. So here we go, is, uh, we have our V-Ray Sun. I use V-Ray Renderer, by the way, if anyone's wanting to know. I try to mimic the shadow as close as possible. I actually was off a little bit, and I noticed that after the final render, it, it really did bother me a little bit. Um, however, it's all right. It still turned out pretty good. Um, so after I did all that, I rendered it, and the render was about uh, eight and a half hours so each frame was about roughly for about 400 frames at 24 frames per second it was roughly around eight and a half hours so it was about a minute and 30 seconds for each frame um, for 400 frames so this is the magic this is behind the visual effects of how I do this uh, there is no actual real tutorial on how to do this I've seen a few online but actually I learned how to do this myself just through reading forms and just trial and error. But um, I just wanted to give everyone a quick little run through of how I did this. Um, I am working, if any of my viewers are watching, and they subscribe from the um, Star Wars Luke, Luke Skywalker versus Kylo Ren and uh, Snoke. I am working on the final part and it's actually a huge, huge animation sequence. I don't know, the runtime is going to be a lot longer than probably two minutes. It's probably going to be roughly around four minutes. Um, if this is your first time coming across my channel, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, I do a lot of visual effects and animations. Take a look at my channel. I do a lot of uh, nerdy things, and uh, um, I definitely have a blast doing them. Um, I do have a couple of 3DS Max tutorials. I do have free stock footage that you can use for your uh, projects, and um, that's basically it. But that Bumblebee movie looks pretty cool, and I'm uh, looking forward to the visual effects portion of it. But uh, yeah, go ahead and support this channel, subscribe, and uh, like this video, leave a comment below, and uh, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.